blood supply to the tissues is inconsistent with the demands. So just a small revision, this is the human heart. Uh, and the coronaries, there are three coronary uh, which supply the heart. Initially, there are two coronaries which are direct uh, bifurcations of the aorta, the first branches of the aorta, the left and right coronary arteries, and the left coronary artery after the left knee bifurcates into left anterior descending artery, which supplies exclusively the apex of the heart. That means you can say apex of the heart is one of the chief areas of the heart. In fact, when you talk about, when cardiologists talk about the heart, they actually are talking about the left ventricle and mainly on the apex. So the right ventricle is an accessory chamber and the atria, atria is actually, meaning atria is an anti-chamber or an axillary chamber. So the right coronary artery mainly supplies, I mean, in 70% or 80% of patients, particularly people who are right-handed, the main supply of the heart is from the right coronary artery. And the left coronary artery exclusively supplies left ventricle and mainly the apex of the heart. If the left main artery is blocked, then the chances of death are multifold. Of course, we'll see to that. And right coronary artery has got multiple branches. So it's a savior in lots of cases. Right coronary artery is one of the chief arteries affected in diabetes mellitus, which is one of the chief causative reasons for this atherosclerosis. Well, now ischemia. So as I was talking about, the blood supply should become less. There are various reasons for the blood supply becoming less. One is if there is a clot inside the artery that can hamper the blood flow and thereby causing ischemic heart disease, which is one of the main reasons and what we are going to discuss today. Another reason can be a pressure from outside. That means the coronary artery can be pressed from outside. And that can uh, cause ischemia or the size of the heart becomes so and so large because this coronary artery is non-stretchable. If you can see this white, pink, uh, pink colored, uh, this, this are, they are non-stretchable arteries and they always lie on the surface of the heart. So we suppose for some reason the heart is enlarged, which happens in hypertensive heart disease and heart failure, the heart becomes grossly enlarged and the artery size remain, I mean, arteries remain uh, this much. So this part of the heart, the enlarged part, does not receive that much blood supply and thereby it presents symptoms of ischemic heart disease. So these are three main reasons, but predominantly 95% of cases, ischemic heart disease is caused by atherosclerosis, which is inside the, I mean, the blockage inside the arteries or what we in technical terms refer to as Plaques. So basically, atherosclerosis or atheroma. There's a rubric called atheroma. And this is not my definition. This definition is from a standard reference book of cardiology and it actually suits homeopathy. Atherosclerosis is a metabolic disorder which is modifiable. So it is modifiable by drugs, it is modifiable by lifestyle changes, it is modifiable by um, surgery. So it's a modifiable disorder. It's a dynamic disorder. Since it's a dynamic disorder, homeopathy medicines are dynamic in nature and therefore it can act. It's a progressive disorder, a chronic inflammatory state. Now, talking myasmatically, all inflammations initially fall into SORA. And inflammations, we have got innumerable medications for inflammatory states. So it's a metabolic disorder, which is modifiable, dynamic, progressive, chronic inflammatory disorder, process of deposition of lipids, minerals, necrotic debris, etc. Now, till here, an allopathic, uh, this is acceptable, allopathic definition is acceptable. But further they have added, on a predisposed irregular healed endothelial lining, just imagine. That means even modern medicine considers that in every normal person, every people person, this atherosclerosis will not be there. It will be only in those people whose arteries, whose endothelium, inner lining of the artery is called an endothelium. The middle lining is the mesothelium and the outer lining is the exothelium. 
the process of deposition on a predisposed irregularly healed now why should scapular lining of the artery be irregularly healed that we we'll go to um, in the next slide so the predisposed irregularly healed endothelial lining of arteries arterioles and capillaries and vasa vasorum the vasa vasorum is vasa means blood vessels vasorum is again a blood vessel so blood vessel supplying the blood vessel so aorta itself needs blood supply coronary arteries themselves need blood supply to i mean the uh, the small muscles to uh, i mean uh, suppose if to survive so if they are themselves are blocked i mean the vasa vasorum is blocked then also you can have ischemic heart disease the metabolic disorder modifiable dynamic progressive chronic inflammatory process of deposition of lipids minerals necrotic debris on a predisposed irregularly healed endothelial lining of arteries arterioles capillaries vasa vasorum is nothing but atherosclerosis coming to certain facts india is number one followed by china not because we have pop a huge population but genetically we carry this gene called this 9p2130 gene when i was doing my uh, after mbbs we i entered the, my dna medicine my first posting was department of cardiology so uh, we had this idea that heart attacks always come in old age there is a reason for someone to go up bring heart attack and the person dies but In the first three months, I saw a lot of young patients, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, thirty, thirty two, thirty four, forty, forty four years. People coming with chest pain, angina, heart attacks. I couldn't understand. I thought that this is. A, I've been always studying in a big hospital, so that was not an issue. But uh, probably I thought uh, this may be the case. It's only been three months, so. for uh, dnb uh, you need to have a synopsis thesis so i went to my uh, my uh, uh, guy and uh, i asked him sir what his what subject should i take he said uh, whatever you wish like i said no whatever i wish like so i just asked him how about uh, clinical angiographic profile in young indians why do they get heart attacks i mean is this the rule here or i mean uh, we see this rarely like is why it's why is atherosclerosis or ischemic heart disease occurring in young people so what he told me adil you do one thing you confirm this finding in the nearby other hospitals i mean other, other local hospitals in nagpur and if you have got connections then in mumbai calcutta uh, ahmedabad and big bangalore is that scenario same so for the next week coming week i did the same thing i went to other uh, hospitals the icus and the same trend was there so that's why i took the uh, my thesis topic was why young indians get heart attacks or clinical angiographic profile of young indians suffering from ischemic heart disease and we one of the very important conclusions in that thesis was that indians carry this 9p2130 gene now what do you mean with this 9p2130 gene this is present in majority of south east asia ruled by britishers previously ruled by Brit britishers whichever countries they are now thrifty genes means a gene which is storing things now what store storing of cholesterol now, what happens is initially when we were ruled by britishers the people who were very wealthy they became wealthier but majority of the population were poor and in times of famine or in times of uh, pl plagues and etc they used to get, lose their life very very often so a generalized mass mutation took place the same type of mutation which has taken place in sickle cell disease in africa a likewise uh, phenomena took place in india and this 9p2130 gene came into existence whereby in times of plenty the human constitution the indian constitution could store lot of fat and times of poverty this entire fat was reused now where would you store so much fat so initially the liver was chosen because that is the fat 
fatty and chemical fatty storage of fat and after the fat is i mean the liver is completed with that uh, fat storage then it uh, comes down and in the belly and the hips and that is why indians are called as lean obese that means as compared to our counterparts in europe australia americas both south and north and africa we look very i mean we are very thin and short heighted but when we see the uh, abdomen the abdominal obesity and the hip obesity surpasses all those populations including the chinese and the japanese so we are lean obese and that's why you must have seen like all those who are heart patients and taking allopathic drugs india and probably indians are the is one of very few countries where you need two blood thinning agents aspirin and clopidogrel for one thing you need only one drug you should have only one drug but in indians generally two drugs are prescribed at the same time and it's continued to life long clopidogrel and aspirin so this is so basically ischemic heart disease particularly atherosclerosis due to atherosclerosis is due to this 9b21 50 gene and suppose in homeopathy if you are going to treat that patient so we may have to downplay the action of this 9p2150 further not my study but many other studies have found that this the people who carry they all carry this gene but some people are in whose family history is very high like if both the parents are positive for ischemic heart disease or both have got diabetes both have got uh, hypertension then there is a 65% chance or 70% chance of the uh, next generation to get uh, to have to have this activated 9b2150 gene nowadays we are seeing obesity in children rampant obesity which is becoming more a pandemic in the indian population and this is because of hyperactivity of 9b2150 gene so i will be showing you some cases if we get time that is uh, so whenever our constitutional medicine is given it is bound to act on this thrifty gene and downplay its effect anyway so obesity and ischemic heart disease is highest in punjab kerala and goa and acanthosis nigricans is a vital sign of pre ischemic heart disease or diabetes mellitus now what i one thing i want to tell you is 9p21 thrifty gene is activated by the age of roughly 6 to 8 years age 6 to 8 years the gene is activated and shows its effect as late as 50 52 60 years initially it shows its effect as late by uh, 65 70 but now because of lot of reasons what we will be seeing later on this activation and its effects are seen as early as uh, 25 30 35 and 40 years of age and uh, acanthosis nigricans is a black band generally hyperpigmentation on the neck back nape of the neck including this you can see on my even i have the sakantos nagrikans below my eyes so dark circles many people ask many of our students like on instagram i'm continuously answering questions every single day people keep on asking sir what to give give, give us medicine for uh, um, this dark circles had there been medication for dark circles i would take it first so there is no medication is for dark circles dark circles are signals they are those nigricans it's a sign that i have inherited this 9p21 uh, gene okay but it will be activated very soon so i should act i should change my lifestyle and i should do whatever i have to do uh, to downplay its action whenever we go for uh, as homeopaths they conduct health checkup camps well if we detect acanthosis nigricans in a peep in a person this shows that this gentleman uh, or, a, or this boy or this girl they likely to develop hd very soon if we catch such a population what we are doing we since every, every year uh, from 2010 till 2019 every single year we do so called health checkup camps to detect metabolic disorders and vaccinate them i'll be telling you how in later slides but these are one of the key signs 
instead of just measuring the blood pressure, which is obviously normal uh, in 99% of patients and 99% uh, of persons in a health checker camp, we select colleges and we select schools. We want to start homeopathy there because that becomes a monopoly if a constitution medicine or a nosod is given here, the entire metabolic epidemic in the entire school or college can be curtailed. Now, sickness evolution. <clears throat> As homeopaths, we have to understand that ischemic heart disease, atherosclerosis particularly, is due to an active tuberculomyosmetic predisposition. So those people who are genetically prone, meaning thereby whose tuberculomyosm has activated. That is the same thing as saying, saying as gene, this 9P21-50 uh, gene has been activated. So active tuberculomyosmetic state predisposition by age of 6 to 8 years. And uh, an exciting factor. Now, whatever exciting factor, many, many, we'll see later on. In this active tuberculomyosmetic state, if an exciting cause occurs, then the child or the young adult start suffering from small functional episode of angina, which are totally neglected. I mean, uh, by uh, the 99% of population. Because so who can think that a young adult can have angina? So for years together, the first 10, 15 years, they are neglected. Sometimes it is like uh, soric angina. You'll see what the soric angina is. So it keeps on. Whenever the exciting factor comes, an angina appears, and uh, someone majority of times they are discarded. Some other times, some painkillers are taken. Some other times, massage is done. So on and so forth. But then this continues. No one actually thinks about whether the person is going in for atherosclerosis or not. But anyway, now. Exciting factor is a cause which comes and goes, comes and goes, and every time new. But then there are certain factors which are maintaining factors. So this child, young adult, or an adult is now fixed in a maintaining factor. And now this anja, sorry, anjana will no longer uh, be coming and going. It will be there in a stable form. For example, Initially, I could walk four kilometers. Now, after walking two kilometers, I get some discomfort. I initially, I could climb up a four flight of steps with very ease. Now, after three flight of steps, I have to take some breathing time. So these are stable angina. So the person knows exactly how much he or she can do a physical activity. This also continues for about one, I mean, few years, depending on the situation. But the maintaining factor it keeps, it keeps on uh, persisting. Then the stable angina loses its stability and becomes unstable. This is a very, very problematic situation. Any symptom which is stable is manageable. It's okay. It does not harm the body. The body prepares to deal with it. Unstability, instability is not a good phenomenon. If there is angina, if there is any symptom, instability cannot be addressed by the body by itself, and that's why it starts showing symptoms. So initially, I could walk two kilometers and used to get chest pain. So the instability is sometimes I can walk two kilometers and nothing happens. Other times I walk, something happens. Sometimes it happens in one kilometer. Sometimes it can happen after meals, after loss of sleep. It can happen in sleep if I get a bad dream. If I get recurrent bad dreams, every time I can pick up with angina pectoris and that may show uh, uh, choking or some other sensation, not necessarily chest pain. And slowly and steadily, again, the maintaining, now you don't need the maintaining factor to continue because now the switch has completely taken over control. And now the cascade, what we, call, we say, is still end up with acute myocardial infarction. So once the unstable angina starts, that constitution, that economy is ready for a heart attack. So many times, unstable angina, which is not addressed properly, turns into peri-infarct angina, and then finally into acute myocardial infarction. 50% of people who suffer from the first heart attack die. 
and covid has taught us covid has actually like diabetes is one disease which has become a science by itself diabetology likewise hiv and now we have got covidology covid has changed the entire perspective and one of the chief reasons of death of people is an acute myocardial infarction covid also i'm talking about so covid has brought this uh, because covid attacks the rbc and that's how that's the reason it separates it dissociates itself dissociates hemoglobin and that's why we get very high ferritin levels and that is why for the first time people started measuring ferritin to such a large scale because covid virus attacks the hemoglobin not only that t dimer which was only the investigation of choice on a patient on ventilator plus icu every single man and woman on earth knows about d dimer because d dimer reflects the uh, destruction potential of covid vaccine and covid vaccine has known to cause lots and lots of heart attacks sorry not vaccine uh, covid virus the acute myocardial infarction as people who survive this acute myocardial infarction ami either land up with complications or death and complications are congestive cardiac failure or rhythm disorders or anything else now congestive cardiac failure can be initially but it is and this happens mostly in diabetics mostly in diabetics the pumping capacity which was initially say 80% 70% after a heart attack and if they are untreated for a long time what happens in diabetes will see later on why because diabetes they have got silent heart attack and in diabetes the classical symptoms of angina don't present so what happens is they land up reaching late to the doctor and they land up with arrhythmias or congestive cardiac failure which is generally irrecoverable now we had a study way back in 1998 when i was doing my uh, uh, dnb because we had lot of uh, con uh, complete access of with uh, angiographies in a medical college there we came up with how psychotic plaques and syphilitic plaques behave the pathogenesis of psychotic plaque is fibrosis more and deposition of minerals and cholesterol etc there is syphilitic plaques the actual pathology is degeneration along with deposit degeneration of the inside of the arterial wall or endothelial the plaques psychotic plaques are very hard because they contain lot of calcium where syphilitic plaques contain lot of necrotic debris that is when they soft and cheesy the contents of psychotic plaques minerals obviously both the lipids whereas lipid is more in uh, consistency uh, the uh, quantity of lipid are more in syphilitic plaques as compared to calcium so what are the effects of psychotic plaque they cause lumen stenosis or embolism whereas in syphilitic plaques the plaque can rupture or slowly chip off slowly erode so rupture or erosion is very common in syphilitic plaques so what are the clinical effects you generally get chronic stable angina of small vessel angina in syphilitic plaques that means they have been having angina pectoris since 10 15 years and nothing has happened to them major heart attacks have not come but syphilitic people syphilitic constitutions very easily land up with unstable angina and the acute myocardial infarction is quite high psychotic plaques if we do an angiogram there's multi vessel disease syphilitic plaques they have got single or double vessel disease psychotic plaques generally require a bypass surgery whereas syphilitic plaques are uh, i mean uh, they can be tackled with angioplasty if we're talking about surgical procedures now when we insert a stent in a psychotic for a psychotic uh, artery the stent in the insertion becomes very difficult but the placement is easy because what is we insert the stent it remains that way when syphilitic plaques if you insert the stent it can move forward and backward also so placing is different difficult restenotic rate is very low in psychotic plaques and restenotic rates are very high in syphilitic plaques plaque dissolution some people come to your doctor do you have drugs you can dissolve plaques we'll see that they are difficult and delayed because we are dealing with uh, calcium more of calcium in psychotic plaques they can be done in syphilitic plaques easily strategis phosphorus conium and phytolaca now uh, now this is a theoretical discussion 
next question should not rebounce doctor how do we identify whether this is a, this person who has come to us has a psychotic or sympathetic flux because we only have an angiogram we don't have the uh, pathology of the flux this was just a study since we were doing a study homeopathically also that at the same time i had already started my study there homeopathically so we had come up with this uh, uh, hypothesis to understand atherosclerotic much better in a homeopathic perspective causations obviously the family history and genetics if i told you both the parents are positive for diabetes now what we have seen is diabetes generally is passed on from the mother's side and hypertension and its complications like kidney failure and stroke is generally from the father's side if the father has got kidney failure and stroke then the pro the, the, the uh, next generation has got a very high chance of that mother has got hypothyroidism and diabetes and those complications and from the mother's side comes peripheral neuropathy is again from mother's side but that is not fixed it is in general so if the, both the parents have got then you have got 65 to 70% chance of the next generation having this entire and we have seen that suppose if the father has got ischemic heart disease say in the a on the by roughly by the age in 60s 61 to 70 years then the next generation the children will have or the gene activated or show the effects 10 years earlier in the range of 50 to 60 years this is roughly an observation why there are many factors to uh, talk about family history of genetics diet the diet we speak on various forums i today also i'm going to talk about diet for generations together a diet has not changed in fact it has evolved evolved and has become more synthetic in nature and less natural i said that the quantity of food also is becoming more and more i mean it has not changed like for example my great grandfather my grandfather he used to work in fields so they used to they used to consume a good amount of diet but I, from my father and from my now my me and my children we are now no longer more physical activity is extremely less but out of the 24 hours or uh, at least 16 to 18 were waking hours 13 to 14 hours are spent in the room doing something or other more with mental activity and extremely less physical activity or physical activity we have to go to the gymnasium take out time of one hour half an hour from our schedule but whom we call as very busy schedule and still a diet remains same breakfast lunch and dinner a normal average working human indian i'm talking about a standard indian is called 70 kg weighing 5 or uh, in 70 kg and 5.5 height 5 feet 5 inches height that is called standard indian uh, indian reference man an indian reference woman is 54 and weighing 60 uh, 4 kg so standard uh, indian uh, female we surpass today the standard average uh, weight of uh, adults ranging between 25 to uh, 48 or 50 years is somewhere between 72 to 80 years 80 kg the diet has remained same breakfast lunch and dinner and we don't need such so many calories we only need at the most 2000 calories at the most i'm talking about 2000 calories after going to the gym i mean uh, uh, even if we do go to the gym and then also we need only 2000 calories but we are taking way beyond one single pastry and one coke or one alcohol etc can take your calories shoot up the diet has become a very very important predisposition we have to change the diet according to our times and we cannot now eat breakfast lunch and dinner we have to do brunch breakfast and lunch what is called as intermittent fasting a very technical term but then that is now it is required and at the most dinner is needed the diet lifestyle atherosclerosis is lifestyle disorder and unless and until you change the lifestyle you make the patient change the lifestyle you cannot have any effect whether with homeopathy or allopathy even with constitutional drugs does not they all go waste so lifestyle is important you have brought this disease on yourself it is the patient's prerogative is the patient's duty to change his or her lifestyle addictions innumerable addictions are there but one of the commonest addictions which is causing this 
is immediate treatment i mean there was a time when people used to never take medications unless extremely required and today we have a time where even small children for the slightest of injury as slightest of pain ask for medications common medication i'm not going to about allopathy homeopathy any medications so you don't give the body a chance to repair itself the body is always under the pressure of the drug drug force in homeopathy is concerned reiki is concerned or energy science is concerned or in fact what we call as matter is not matter a few uh, i mean i think two weeks ago i posted uh, on my instagram page as well as uh, on facebook one very very um, good quote by einstein albert einstein and he says there's nothing as matter matter is nothing but energy which has lost its potential potential energy zero potential energy but active kinetic energy then potential energy potential energy and kinetic energy so sorry so when we when the energy kinetic energy is reduced to zero and potential energy is still there that is matter that what is what he writes so basically we are all energy beings and that's the reason why people who condemn homeopathy to be a placebo therapy they fail to understand that homeopathy is absolutely an energy medicine and can act because all matters are nothing but different form of energy or different phase of energy as per einstein talking about addictions again so we are not i mean uh, as suppressions mental or physical addictions or drugs addiction to uh, net addictions any addictions are seeds for uh, the development of ischemic heart disease symptomatic treatment again stress mental and physical now stress has always been there from time immemorial since the since the organism is born there's different types of stresses every single organism grows with stress so we in fact the biggest problem in today's time is we only say stress 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 but we don't know how to manage stress in schools we should be taught stress management we should teach our children mental stress management in a very very early age and last coming to one of the very very important reasons of and that is vaccination what we have seen vaccination now let me give you an example which i always give in my lectures uh i will not speak about covid vaccination because there are a lot of controversies uh, uh, my observations may not tally and unnecessary we land some soup so let's talk about our age old vaccination of bcg so 1974 government of india decided that they should eradicate tuberculosis not a very very beautiful thing a very beautiful uh, concept of eradicating tuberculosis and malaria so forget about malaria now let's talk about tuberculosis now before 1974 people who used to treat tuberculosis there was an allopathic drug called as pas para amino salicylic acid and there were small globules like homeopathic globules number 20 number 30 globule size para amino salicylic acid and everywhere they when I mean, the patients used to have morning after an evening for 3 to 4 months and they used to be cured of tuberculosis so now what happened is in 1974 the government of india stressed that no every person should take a bcg vaccination and various dots therapy centers were started throughout india where they used to be, they, you can get free uh, allopathic medications for tuberculosis so that was a good thing so when we take the balance sheet from 1974 it's 48 years now so let's see now what has happened and vaccination so 1974 to 1984 the number of tuberculosis cases started decreasing and that was a good thing but those who had tuberculosis they were immune to para amino salicylic acid in fact now instead of one drug they required four drugs inh rifampicin ethambutol and paracetamol and bcg was given at every new birth 
And from 1984 to 1994, what happened was people did not, I mean, initially it was uh, tuberculosis, the home for tuberculosis, the lungs, pulmonary tuberculosis. But then people started coming with various other symptoms. Doctor, for past one month, I've been having recurrent blood in my urine, painless hematuria. And kidney was investigated and they found tuberculosis of the kidney. Doctor, I've been having backache since a long time. It has been eight, seven months. I'm taking physiotherapy, I'm doing massage, and yet there's consistent pain. They took out an X-ray and they found out that the water has collapsed. It is Pott's spine. So on and so forth. So the first time tuberculosis left its home, that is the lungs, and extra pulmonary tuberculosis became rampant. That happened from 1984 to 1994. And from 1994 to 2004, another thing came up that was HIV. Now, HIV, it was seen that majority of HIV positive patients landed up getting tuberculosis. And their tuberculosis became incurable. Till 1994, till 2004, the human economy, the humans were infected with tuberculosis at all, practically the whole population still today carry the tubercular trait and what we call as primary complex. Fine. But then we don't even know about it. I'm talking about the tuberculosis disease. So we were all infected by human tuberculosis. But for the first time, we started seeing after 2000, 2004, different strains of this bacteria. <clears throat> Avian tuberculosis started affecting the humans. Uh, vaccination was still going on. The drugs were a four. Then we had got bovine tuberculosis. Tuberculosis of the cows and cattle started affecting human beings. So you get abdominal tuberculosis in a very large quantity. And now for the first time, initially the investigation was, if I suspect someone from tuberculosis, I would tell him or her to cough. The sputum was taken and was tested for AFB, acid fast bacilli. Once the AFB was positive, you used to do an X-ray chest and the treatment was started. And now, although the symptoms were there, all the symptoms were there of tuberculosis, loss of weight, the, everything was there. And yet, the problem was the uh, investigation, the AFB was always negative. So we started with a new investigation and that was TBIgG and TBIgM. For the first time, a simple bacterial infection, we had to test this antigen and the antibody. And steroids were introduced as one of the first primary line of treatment to control tuberculosis. Now, there's no need of steroids for uh, uh, bacterial infection. Uh, so there was no reason. So, uh, okay. And uh, then what happened was from 2004 to 2014, we get NDR tuberculosis, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. So vaccination was there. And if we take a 48 years account of this vaccination, we will see that in spite of BCG, the fate of tuberculosis, and today they have got rampant tuberculosis and various forms of tuberculosis, excepting the heart. There is no other organ that is immune to tuberculosis. Heart is the only organ which is not infected by tuberculosis. The pericardium is infected. It's outside the heart, but not the heart. So going to uh, exciting factors can be shock, surgery, drugs, physical, chemical, and biological factors, and promoting factors could be occupation, diet, living, mal grooming, etc. Angina can be can present itself in various types, typical, atypical, and variant. Why this is important is because typical angina is a sodic expression, a chest pain or a chest discomfort, chest discomfort. sudden, violent, self-limiting, just a flicker of. Uh, Muscle contraction, but it is severe and less than five minutes functional and radiates to the left arm, along with mild sweating and difficult breathing. And this differentiates it from any other reason, uh, uh, like with the, uh, pericarditis or lung infection or a muscular or gastric pain, chest pain, and heart pain. The difference is mild sweating and difficult breathing. 
euphoric expressions are generally always accepted by a shock, mental or physical and better by rest. And the person has this classic Levine sign, putting the hand or just touching the chest. Now this atypical angina pectoris is important because India is the world, unfortunately, world capital of hypertension, diabetes, ischemic heart disease. And we have got maximum combos, hypertension okay. and diabetes turning out to be high, uh, uh, angina pectoris. A typical angina pectoris is very, very common. And that is... Yeah. yeah. You can get pain not only in the chest, but in the left jaw, right shoulder, the back, the big ass. In fact, today itself, I got this patient who's a young patient, age 43 years of age. His father died at the age of 37 with a massive heart attack. His brother died at the age of 43. And since uh, uh, 43, due to a massive heart attack, this man has become 43 now. And since five years, he's having diabetes, hypertension, and now started with severe chest pain. But he does not have chest pain. He has got back pain. And whenever he walks about two or three uh, kilometers or one or two kilometers, he starts having back pain. Epigastrium. The radiation can be initially, I mean, the uh, common uh, thinking is chest pain radiating to the left side. But now no longer. Chest pain can radiate to the right side also and can be angina. To the right jaw, to the neck, back of the neck, to the hands. The duration can be more than five minutes. And you can have a stabbing sensation, a load sensation, or a band sensation, or an empty feeling. You may not have any of these symptoms at all. You can have choking or suffocation, repeated choking and suffocation, which you can take it as pharyngitis for a pretty long time. Or empty vomiting, not actual vomiting. Epigastric discomfort, which is bypassed as acidity in most of the patients. Unusual restlessness and anxiety only in this region, this area, area. Palpitations, perspiration, unusual perspiration, breathlessness on exertion, a short barking cough, and a scapular pain, a persistent scapular pain on physical exertion, which many people most of the time discard it as cervical spondylosis. And that's the reason why we see deaths of so called otherwise healthy people have lost a few actors, and that is why the celebrities. Die suddenly. So long, healthy looking celebrities appear I mean, die suddenly. Then we uh, suddenly the entire population becomes uh, aware okay, what has happened, what has happened. You also will get it. So they start getting infected, uh, investigated. Scapular pain is a very, very common presentation of a tubercular uh, angina variant and happens in diabetics to a very great extent. Shoulder pain, right and left, and particularly frozen shoulder. Frozen shoulders for a long time, they should be investigated for IHD unless otherwise proved, as well as for diabetes. Certain very important uh, investigations and first and foremost investigations urine routine. Urine routine should be done first and it can be repeated n number of times. There's no need to prick the patient and you get a load of information in urine routine. There's no business of passing of sugar and uh, proteins in the urine, but if they are there, then IHD should be considered. Hemoglobin. Correction of hemoglobin is imminent and that's why not only with iron but vitamin B12 and D3. And we have seen a lot of patients, vitamin D3 and B12 patients, presenting as ischemic heart disease, whereas they did not have heart at all. Rather, their problem was only anemia. So anemia correction is important. Then, when you're suspecting heart attack, creatine kinase and throughout proponent I is important. Many times in many patients, ECG can lie. ECG can lie. Like ECG can be normal and you're getting a heart attack. But troponin I or troponin T is a small test. It's a quick test. It should be available in maximum half an hour, 20 minutes. And if it is positive, it is definitely a heart attack. If it's not positive, it's not a heart attack. Creatine kinase takes two or three hours. Likewise, SGOT, creatinine electrolytes. Now, if young people get heart attacks, or if I suspect that person has got acanthos negative cancer, I should test the homocysteine levels. Homocysteine levels and urine microalbumin levels, they will indicate whether because of atherosclerosis, the person is going for early heart attacks, early stroke, if they are high, and they can be managed with extensive lifestyle changes and a constitutional homeopathic drug. X-ray chest is redundant now. Cardiac CT is can be done. Echocardiogram is the investigation of choice. ECG, 
Yes, nowadays, every homeopath should know how to read an ECG. Someday, hopefully, I can take a class on ECG. How a homeopath should read an ECG, but then that will be a later on phenomena. Fundoscopy is a very, very important feature for all diabetics and hypertensive unless otherwise proved. Yearly fundoscopy tells you the progression of ischemic heart disease and a very good uh, prognostic uh, uh, investigation. And of course, coronary angiogram, you can have a CT angiogram or you can have an actual coronary angiogram or classic angiogram. General management, see normally, in, uh, see, loads of diet keep on coming and uh, people keep on improvising. But we have found out since past 2000, since 2008 that the diet based on blood types has a very high patient compliance at the same time, a very great reduction in symptoms as well as the medication needed. Oil, depending upon the geography, now, since I've got a phone call to speed up my conversation, that's why I'm doing a bit faster. So be with me, please. Oil, depending upon the geography. So suppose if I stay at Nagpur and we have been consuming, say, Nagpur has got uh, uh, like coconut oil. Soya bean oil. Soya bean oil and Javas is linseed. Linseed. Linseed oil. Javas oil is very, very common initially. We don't have. But then this is Nagpur oil. And suppose I've been taking that oil for my entire lifetime at the age of say, uh, 32, I have been transferred to Kerala. Either I adapt to coconut oil where it's a routine thing or I continue this same oil there. But I cannot change, keep on changing my oils, which is nowadays propagated by many uh, uh, cardiologists themselves. Because my body has to adapt to that oil. Everything I can have an oil. Low oil is not an option only. The type of the oil is also important. So depending on the geography, salt, people living on the coastal region can have NACL, quite common salt. But people who live in the plateau, they should have KCL, that is Senna Namak or potassium chloride or rock salt or pink salt, Himalayan pink salt. Adequate sleep or rest is absolutely essential. Coming back in a mythology, or it's not a mythology actually, it's in the Vedas it is given. That there is a Brahmakal. Brahmakal is between 2.30 to 4.30 a.m. But that is not, Brahma means evolution or change. And actually it has been scientifically proven that is the time when the entire body undergoes refurbishing. And that the only need for the body is absolute rest, but non-dreamy sleep. For all those people who miss this non-dreamy sleep, the deep sleep between 2.30 a.m. and 4.30 a.m., they are losing the that day's, uh, that night's uh, evolution, the Brahmakal is lost. And suppose this, this keeps on happening. So all those who go sleep, who sleep very late at night, 2 a.m. and 12.30, 12, 12, they stand up, they land up nishibic heart disease very soon or diabetes very soon because the body does not prepare. And that is why the first definition that we have seen that the deposition is not irregularly healed in an in, uh, internal lining of the arteries and arterioles. This healing is not complete and the deposition keeps on starting. Adequate sleep and rest is important. That is one of the first prerogative for patient, treating patients of ischemic heart disease. Exercise, mental, meditation, self-process, positive visualization and physical is important. And exercise is different from exertion. Many housewives complain, calcare carbs and people who are lazy, sulfurs, they complain that doctor sahab, itna chalta hu ya chalti hu. Wo usi mein exercise ho jati hai. I walk so much that the exercise itself is no. Exercise means at the proper time and the proper movement and the same repetitive movement so that the body gets adapted to it. So that is physical exertion. Massage. People who are unable to do exertion, they should go in for massage. But massage is contraindicated in Arnica people, Ruta people, and they're very much indicated by Nyan Kostikam who are aggravated by exercise. Counseling. Reassurance and education is important for any single disease including ischemic heart disease. Anger control is important. Yoga, Surya Namaskar, Sahaja Yoga, Pranayam, breathing exercises, and that too, according to your age. Like you cannot do Pranayam only in the age of 30 years. An 83 years old male doing the same exercise as 30 years is absolutely wrong. So you have to do according to your age. If you're walking and start brisk walking, jogging, running, hiking, dance, you have to increase it periodically. Likewise with Surya Namaskar, if you're doing 1, you'll do it 5, 10, 21 as per your age. Anger control 
like by counting, by diary writing, by music, by gardening, and address relationship issues. As a homeopath, you are also the counselor. So relationship issues are nearly 90% reason for uh, excitement of this cardiac events. We have got palliative short-acting drugs, curative drugs, intercurrent and surgical. This is important. Now, what happens is we get, we get patients, we get admissions uh, in a hospital. Now, every time I am not there physically. So we have made a protocol so that my juniors can start the therapy right away. This can be copied by anyone at the OPD level also. So whenever a person of chest pain comes, <clears throat> We see first see the exciting factor, mental or physical, whether it's because of anger, insult, fear, grief, bad news, ailments from, joy, ailments from, eating after, walking by straight or walking, uh, ascending steps, or it is after sex. And again, when it's anger, if it's expressive or non-expressive, insult, whether it's expressive or non-expressive, likewise, if the person expresses and then has chest pain or the symptoms of angina, remedies are different. So we have put various remedies on the first care basis, Bryonia, Naxomic, Aconite, Naja, Ignatia, Jessimum, Sirius. So you'll see Sirius Bon Blandi is a very rare drug, Sirius Bon Blandi. It's from the cactus family. So apart though, normally when you talk about a, to a homeopath, only four products, they come with this cactus, Cradigus, uh, Naja, and Spigelia and Lachesis. Nothing more. But opium, a drug like opium, or Saphisicaria, acid pause and chamomilla, coffee, they can actually decrease anjana and buy you a much needed time. But suppose you don't get all these things, then you go to this actual symptoms. If the chest pain is localized along the palpitation, you have spigelia. If the classical left chest, left arm along the ghabrat, the ghabrat is uniquely Hindi. There's no, you can't call it restlessness as ghabrat. But since we have no other word of the ghabrat, we call it restlessness inside the chest. Arnica. So Arnica is called as sorbitate of homeopathy. So many times I stop sorbitate, I give them a bottle of Arnica 200 on them and they can take SOS, does not lead to proving, but it decreases anjana symptoms very, if this is the symptom, left chest to left arm or ghabrat is a classical symptom of most of the patients, they respond to Arnica, you can stop nitrates, you can stop a lot many drugs, thus replacing them symptomatically. I know this is an allopathic type of homeopathy, giving, but initially if you want to do that, then withdraw most of these uh, other drugs. Left chest to the back, we have got lactodactis and lactodactis. This is a very, very common symptom in diabetes and that is why lactodactis, which is otherwise rarely used in diabetic angina as one of the very prominent positions. Lactodactis, MAC and Naxomica because pain with acidity is again a very common symptom in diabetics. In fact, inferior wall MI or inferior wall ischemia, which is very common in diabetics, uh, have a, I mean, Naxomica tends to that. Certain pathological similitudes. We have observed and practice, and they have improved beyond doubt with various studies. The terminal arjuna and mother tincture, Zumbul, given a long time, in 1x, 2x, or 3x, or uh, mother tinctures, they actually decrease the plaque size. Angiographically, we have proven, and we are quite happy. We do recommend it. If people are taking, yes, but we recommend the homeopathy mother tinctures. Suppose venous plaque dissolution, certain drugs like hirudin and vipera. Hyper and millisimal potencies 0 by 1, 0 by 2, 0 by 3, not exceeding 0 by 4, and they can be re re repeated as often till the plaque can come, uh, come down. Now, whenever a homeopath takes a case, there are certain pointers. As a homeopath, a person comes to me, they come with very high expectation. 99% they want to avoid surgery, they want to avoid uh, bypass and angioplasty, or people who have undergone stenosis. Uh, strength. So, people who have got left main disease, who are refusing bypass, beware. Tell them that homeopathy can work, but beware. CV unstable angina, uncontrolled diabetes. If you see an angiogram with both collaterals, congestive cardiac failure, recurrent congestive cardiac failure, known defaulters or doctor shoppers, you should be aware and not to take them. Refusing is good. Now, let's start with the case. Initially, the video, and then we'll, I'll discuss the case. There's no audio. Yeah.
Dr. Adil, we are not able to hear the audio. Uh, Maybe you'll have to stop share and then share uh, so computer sounds. Okay. Yes, sir. No, no, Dr. Adil. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just stop the screen share. Yeah. Share it again. And when you share the next time, that time click on co computer sounds. Share it again. I'm, I'm, I'm for stopping your uh, share, okay? The, so you'll have to share it again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, share your screen again, sir. Now can you hear? Um, no. 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 No, did you click on co share computer sounds this time? There is a small window which comes. When you screen share, yeah. Um, yeah, when you screen share, just click on the screen share. Now the pop-up window on the left-hand corner, there will be a box. Share sound, so yeah. Share sound, click on that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is possible. Yes, perfect. मैं डॉक्टर सत्यनारायण जयसवारा तो ऐसे हूँ होमेपेट प्रैक्टिसिंग लास्ट टेन इयर्स यू विल हैव टू इंक्रीज योर कंप्यूटर साउंड बीस दिसंबर 2024 मुझे चेस्ट इस फुल क्या कर रहे थे आप मैं थोड़ा स्ट्रेस में था बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ फाइनेंशियल इश्यूज़ लॉकडाउन में स्ट्रेस था पूरा ए रूटीन काम में एक दिन सडनली मुझे स्टेयर के चलते वक्त चेस्ट पेन होने लगा तो इट वाज लाइक टिपिकल चेस्ट पेन रिट्रोस्टल में चेस्ट पेन रेडिएटेड टू लेफ्ट आर्म उसके बाद में मैं इमरजेंसी में एक हॉस्पिटल में गया उन्होंने ईसीजी निकाला ईसीजी वाज वेरी बेड उन्होंने बोला कि आप तो ताबड़त so they said that you have to take a look at the angiography and do further treatment. So we went to Apollo on the same day, 20 December 2020. Then we did an angiography. In the angiography, I told you that my triple vessel blockage is around 90% stenosis and my EF ejection fraction is just 55%. And the pumping capacity is 55%? 55 percent आ गया था। ठीक है। फिर उन्होंने जो बेसिक ट्रीटमेंट दिया होगा वो दिया। हाँ वो दिया और उन्होंने ने बोला कि इमरजेंसी आपको एंजियोप्लास्टी करवाना होगा। ओके। नहीं तो आपको आज ही रात में कुछ हो जाएगा। ओके। तो फिर भी फिर हमने सर से एक बार बात किया। सर ने मुझे ऑनलाइन कंसल्टेशन उस लास्ट मंथ ही आया था जून में जून में जून 2021 को आया था नहीं सर वो स्टार्टिंग का आपका तीन चार दिन जो कंसल्टेशन टाइम था हाँ तब आया था तो सर ने मुझे मेडिसिन दिए और अब तो वन मंथ अभी मुझे 80 टू 85 परसेंट 90 परसेंट बोल सकते हैं बहुत सिम्टम चला गया अभी पेन नहीं होता तो जब आते थे तब जब आए थे फर्स्ट टाइम तब एक महीने पहले तब सिम्टम्स थे क्या हाँ सर तभी बहुत सिम्टम था इनफैक्ट मैंने उसी से पहले आधे घंटे पहले यहाँ पे बगल में ईसीजी का ये है वहाँ से ईसीजी निकाला था ये जो कि वो अभी इसमें भी दिखा रहा ह� कल का ही इको है तो लास्ट इको का रिपोर्ट वाज 55 परसेंट पंपिंग कैपेसिटी दिस हैज कम टू 72 परसेंट ओनली इन वन मंथ यस सर तो सिमिलर वो मैंने हमें या 
So let's talk about this case. He's a 38 years old male reported on June 2021. Complaints of pain in the left chest, radiating the left arm along aggravated physical exertion, easy fatigue, excessive belching and flatulence. His appetite, urine and sweat were normal. There was excessive desire for sweets. Stool was loose and occasional mucus he had passed, used to pass. Mentally, he was a very nervous person, very apprehensive, depressed, as you heard, because uh, financial instability since past full uh, year. 2020 was not good for many people, uh, many doctors as well. And he had got this ailments from long continued mental stress. And on top of that, whichever the date he has mentioned, the day was a heart attack. He had actually got a very bad news, which he later told me. I mean, he, he, no, he told me uh, when he took my first consultation on phone. His wife told me. Basically, a very impulsive person. He was already suffering from hypertension uh, since past five years, and he's on Tell Me Sartan. He's also on diabetic, diabetes, uh, known diabetes on metformin, and had some symptoms of unstable, some stable of angina since a year, since the past entire 2020. But he used to neglect. Eventually, in December, he started having a heart attack. There was no particular family history. When he had come to us in June, his pulse was normal, BP was slightly high, 170 by 100, and systemic examination was normal. Now, let's go to the first consultation. Because that time, this uh, gentleman was actually in the ICCU. But they did not want to undergo rescue angioplasty. Rescue angioplasty because when you see his angio uh, disease, the doctors there suggested that at least do an angioplasty now so that you'll be saved. A. B. He wanted to, I mean, they were, they, they suggested a second op option of thrombolysis. But he did not want to get thrombolysed and neither he wanted to do angioplasty a rescue of angioplasty. So although he was admitted there, but they came to homeopathic help, they were disordered homeopathic help, and as reported by his wife on phone, there was sudden onset soreness in the left chest, radiating to the left arm, and better by constant motion. Ailments from bad news, a sudden financial loss. Apart from the ongoing financial loss, at that time, two, three days ago, he had a, another major loss, and that led to uh, this heart attack. I asked her wife, how is he? How does he seem? And she said, very depressed. And he wanted to be himself alone. Like normally, uh, if a patient is there in the ICCU, they uh, you always welcome your uh, spouses or your children to be around. But he wanted to stay alone. And his BP at that time was 190 by 104. Taking this small totality, we gave him calcium one m repeated every 30 minutes till the patient settled. This was the... Uh, not very clear of ECG, clear ECG, but then this shows a heart attack. The angiography was done still, and it shows left main is short and normal. LAD, left anterior descending artery, is a type 3 vessel. I can tell you now what is type 3 vessel, but it takes some time. With 90% stenotic lesion, followed by, FB means followed by, 90% stenotic lesion, the mid segment. See now. The artery we divide into proximal segment, mid segment, and a still segment. So proximally there was 90%, middle there was 90%, and the diagonals, three diagonals come out of the left main artery, left artery, sorry. They all are diffusely diseased. That was one. Second, the left circumflex, which is another artery coming from the another bifurcation of the left, uh, left main artery, the dominant vessel with total occlusion from mid segment. Nearly 100%, total means 100%. Major marginal uh, shows decrease. Now, the left circumflex also had a, uh, a branch, which is called as the marginal artery. That also was a diffusely diseased artery. Now, this is a classical case of a diabetic patient or an uncontrolled diabetic patient going in for a heart attack. And this is this angiogram is a classical diabetic heart disease. So diabetes is not only hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia. Is this is diabetes? If you get a picture, see the age. This is diabetes. Control the diabetes, not the blood sugar. The diabetes disease. RCA, that's right coronary artery, is a non-dominant vessel. So this gentleman is unlucky because seventy percent of our population 
right coronary artery, as I told you, becomes the dominant vessel, supplies the major part of the heart. But in this gentleman, the left circumflex supplies the main uh, and the major part of the heart, and that that itself is blocked. This along with this blood vessel, hundred ten percent blocked. And that is why he suffered a massive heart attack. Now, when he had come to us in June, symptoms for constitutional hemolymphoma, ailments from long continued mental stress, as a hurried disposition, very apprehensive, very impulsive, desire sweets, irritation, petulance. You don't need to repetitize also this case. Argent and writing of was constitutional hemolymphoma. 200, one dose start and repeated 15 days after, along with extensive lifestyle changes, a blood group diet, exercises and meditation, which were compliant with the patient. He did all those, and you could see at the uh, compumping capacity. Our diabetics, as I told you, the biggest flaw in diabetes is they don't get chest pain. They get some weird symptoms, and because of that, they don't go to the doctor very early. And even if they go to the doctor early, problem is the pumping capacity, which should be 80% plus, at least at this age of 38, 39 years, has reduced markedly and become 50, 55%. If it goes below 30%, we call it as ischemic cardiomyopathy, which is not curable. It cannot be brought back. Ischemic cardiomyopathy. So Argentine Maticum 200 was given. He followed all these. And in only one month's time, Mentally today, even when he came next month, he was much stable. He's still under therapy, of obviously. It's going to take a long time when I see, when I repeat an angiogram and these the changes before and after homeopathic therapy. He has got no RWMA, regional ball motion of vomit. Now what happens is, this is the heart. Regional means one region. Wall means WLL wall. Motion abnormality. So whenever you got a heart attack, suppose in this wall, this wall moves slow as compared to the less other part of the heart. And this is how we catch up that this man has got, a woman has got a heart attack in this area. So the vessel supply in this area will be deceased. So an echocardiogram can tell you the exact vessel which is uh, problematic or which is uh, being blocked. So no RWMA and the pumping capacity came to 70%. This is the ECG. Uh, day before, I mean, after one month of uh, Argentine Manticum, it's normal. And this is the echocardiogram. LV cavity and walls are normal. Ejection fraction 72%. No RWMAs. RV is normal. Right ventricle is normal. IAS and IV is intact. IAS, interatrial septum and interventricular septum intact. Now, this man has LCX, left circumflex artery disease, blockages. And left circumflex exclusively supplies, in most of the normal people, the interventricular septum. Interventricular septum is 70% muscular and 30% uh, membranous. That muscle, although left uh, circumflex artery was uh, disease, diseased, but in this patient, nothing has happened to this wall, the interventricular septum, because this is a very, very thin wall as compared to the left ventricle and right ventricle. And gets ruptured very easily. And if it ruptures, it kills you very fast. So IS and IVS are intact. Aorta is normal. AV wall is normal. No aortic sclerosis. No aortic regurgitation. Opinion, eco-color Doppler is normal. This is, of course, we have not stopped his eco sprint. We have not stopped his anti-hypertensive. We have not stopped his anti-diabetic. They have been continuing as before. But no other additional medications, allopathic medications, or Ayurvedic, or herbal has been needed. Argentum Naticum has been the only medicine. But since he's a homeopath by himself, I did not need to give him the medicine. My first day, I just write it down and give it. That's my style. So this is a classical case of acute coronary syndrome in a young diabetic and the commonest presentation nowadays. That's why I close this case. As, was, as an acute simulimum, he's helped him to settle down to an extent that he was not thrombolized. Neither anything happened to him after refusing rescue to a BTCA or LAD. Argentine Naticum is constitutional simulimum, not only symptomatically better, but ejection fraction. And, uh, and the reports also say 55%, 72%. This is nothing more but evidence-based homeopathy in this best form. So this is one case. Now, do I have time for another case or should I end? You have, you have 15 minutes time. I have, no? Okay. Yeah, but the last five to seven minutes we will keep for your question answers. Okay, fine.
to another case a 53 hospital. years old male hospitalized uh, at a hospital shahad hospital i showed you the photograph of karma bhumi on 23 1 with complaints of recklessness progressive aggravated by walking since 3 months now he had this 3 months uh, i mean this uh, 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 symptom generalized dropsy generalized anasarca since a month and nocturnal cough which was dry aggravated by inhaling now 23 january is cold month in nagpur nagpur winter sets very late somewhere in january first week of january and last by first till first week of february so he had come on 23 23 he in spite of uh, that cold climate whatever the uh, uh, temperature may be he wanted a slow fan no history of chest pain or bowel complaints urine frequency and quantity was less his appetite was less thirst and sweating were profuse he had profuse thirst and profuse sweating past history no history of diabetes ihd tuberculosis hypertension rhd ihd that was patient had reported mere ko to kuch hai hi nahi doctor sahab bas aise hi hai mentally was very irritable very sensitive and like a cpr patient like a podium person he used to hurt the feelings of others and he used to never care about feelings of others Uh, particularly his own family members his wife and his children and all his words were very hurtful even talking to us he is still a patient on examination dull look pale waxy face anasarca was obviously visible pulse was very high unusually high 148 one uh, irregular miss speech that was a catchy point that this man has got arrhythmias and he is suffering from heart disease bp was very low 108 or 110 by uh, 70 jvp was high that means he had gone into congestive cardiac failure liver was palpable s1 s2 were normal so we have got four heart sounds normally we can hear lap 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 which is normal but suppose if you hear lap drop just a sec doctor lap, just a doctor just a sec doctor sujata sangvi please mute yourself you are disturbing others doctor sujata sangvi please mute yourself okay sir thank you so uh, normally we have got two heart sound normal people lap 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 suppose if we hear lap drop on the mitral area or on the aortic area that means it is the third heart sound third heart sound is and that is a sure sign that the heart has failed sure sign of left ventricular failure and it's a medical emergency yes, patient needs assistance hasta hai to wo jo jota hai na medulla aur arteria ko dono ke bich mein Gayatri Agrawal, please, uh, uh, please mute yourself. Okay. Uh, so S four gallop was there. That means we could hear lap drop, lap drop, lap drop. If you hear, that is S three. Anyway, so in respiratory system we had got few repetitions. This was the ECG, severe tachycardia, and this was the echo. His left ventricle was dilated, and he had a global hypokinesis. Global means the entire heart. particular right and left ventricle were work were competing very slow and the pumping capacity is only 30% so on repetitization we had got china digitalis acetic acid and arsenic alb diagnosis was already ischemic cardiomyopathy that means this gentleman was suffering from diabetes and he did not know because because His sugar levels are always normal, but this heart showed that he was suffering from diabetes since a long time, and his uh, things were not controlled. Anyway, we started with China zero by one every two hours. He was hospitalized along with oxygen and pop position. By twenty four one, the breathlessness was fairly less. Cough started coming out. So in acute states, whenever we have to admit the patients in acute, how do we assess that my remedy is correct? It's not only the sense of uh, well being. it is also an elimination so initially he had got cough but they did not have sputum now with china the sputum was correct so whatever reason i had to step china china was acting so cough with sputum then we increase the potency 0 by 2 3 hourly along with oxygen and propped up position he started having urine output of 1 liter and the pulse rate came down to 150 from 150 to 122 but still high But initially it was irregular. Now it has become regular. Twenty-five one patient became better. 
swelling slightly decreased. Now, just imagine, there is no mention of anasarca in China. If you read China, even our cardiovascular symptoms are hardly in China. It was selected on a mental plane, and not only mental plane. I'll we'll go about why did we select China. So, patient was better. Twenty-seven one cough became drier. Heart rate came down to ninety. So we are going on the right track. China zero by three. By twenty-eight one and twenty-two two, uh, they he was discharged. Now, untreated infarcts. There is a greater chance of congestive heart failure, and this generally happens in diabetics. And this person must have got myocardial infarction multiple times, and he did not know. Small, small infarcts, and he did not know. So we followed a protocol which is called a CCF protocol, which we have made. At the ISRA protocol, we had to show the chest pain. We have made a congestive cardiac protocol because it becomes very difficult. We don't get PQRS in all patients. So even if I am qualified to get PQRS, my juniors are not. So how do we manage hospital patients? That's the reason why protocols are important. So CCF protocol, patient if it's got edema along with breathlessness, less urine, and a tachycardia, fast pulse. Then the remedy of was China. That's the reason why China was selected, along with a mental state, and that was he hurts others' feelings. It is a very prominent symptom of ferramet. Uh, ferramet is a very quarrelsome remedy, and China also has a prominent symptom of hurt hurting others' feelings. China suffocative attacks, aggressive walking, cardiac dropsy, mentally very irritable, sensitive, hurts others' feelings. A look, kill, waxy face. A strong pulse, hard, rapid, and irregular. It was not uh, uh, like ventricular tachycardia. Now, very closely, China and digitalis they resemble each other. Digitalis got irregular but very slow, weak pulse. China has a very strong pulse. Both are irregular. Very slow is digitalis. Very fast is China. Dilated heart. Both China and digitalis have this. Cardiac dropsy. Both have this drug. Tough with bloody froth is his bottom, anxious about future, fear of suffocation at night, dull and lethargic. So there are times when you need to look these very own drugs are like China and digitalis in a new light. Digitalis is an established heart remedy, so don't need to go about it. But China is not, and it really helps sometimes in such cases. So, ladies and gentlemen, I know I was a bit fast, but then. I want you to ask as many questions as possible. These were two cases, these two short cases, and this is how, on a routine OPD and IPD basis, we keep on treating uh, people with homeopathy. If you have got any questions, I am ready. If Sir wants to give any remarks, I invite him now to speak something about ischemic heart disease, diabetes, and uh, homeopathy. I, I think it is better that if you have asked uh, any questions to ask, but as far as homeopathy and cardiology is concerned, uh, yes, I can say uh, that with quite a good understanding that what we are doing at Shah for the past about two decades, uh, homeopathy has got lots to lot to offer for cardiac patient, particularly um, for those who have got um, functional symptoms. My asthmatic pathology is there where the gross structural damages have not yet taken place, where um, the tertiary myasmatic states have not developed. Umepath has got a to give. And if you have got a good case and the centers are there, we're just specifically working on these areas. I'm sure we'll be able to bring out good evidence based um, activities and workshop working in the area of heart diseases. With vis-a-vis -vis homeopathic remedies, uh, I think uh, I'll be happy if you have got some questions to ask, so that I'll be able to share my views, my knowledge for them. So there are two questions at present. Uh, one, Dr. Mariam Salman has asked: Is it because of 9P21 thrifty gene that Indians are taking two medications simultaneously? One of the reason is yes. There is another question from Dr. Jeffna. Will this hirudin and vipera helps us to dissolve to dissolute clots in brain after stroke? Yeah, peripheral arteries we have seen. Pain, it is both drops. 
Dr. Adil, I will share one or two cases. Sure, sure. Dr. Anil Bhatia was invited uh, at uh, Vileparle Homeopathy College for a holistic approach of heart disease. And then Dr. Pereira was talking on allopathic side, Dr. Tambe was on Ayurveda and Dr. Anil Bhatia was on uh, homeopathic side. So there he described that he gave the aromat to a patient and after that uh, angiography was done and it was normal. That was in 1998, I attended in Vileparle College. Yeah, so that is actually the case. Why should we refrain from taking ischemic heart disease? If we take all cases, autoimmune cases and all the autoimmune disease is basically incurable. Ischemic heart disease is just a lifestyle disorder. I think every homeopath should now come forward and this, it is the maximum disease of the day. Diabetes, hypertension and IH. So we should take up these cases and challenges and we can show evidence-based uh, homeopathy and in more, many cases, uh, it's very much possible. So yes, Dr. Anil Bhatia was show at that time and hmm. we have to continue this show, showing even in our own clinics. Dusra, ek, uh, one more case. Oh, Dr. Boriwali me, me jab 95 in 1995, I was Boriwali in Kolhapur. So, Dr. S.B. Dave was one of the He was very old, uh, Calcutta College. Ke the, Dr. B.K. Boss was a student. So, to Dave was sitting in front of me. Tha, and he had angina pain in 70s or 80s. If you Mumbai, mein yaha, hi pe, kisi ke paas gaye the, to, that homeopath had prescribed him Argentum Nitricum. And then Dr. Dave told me that I, I was given Argentum Nitricum because he was a lot of guys. 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 He was a He was a lot of He was so today's case, you know, you second case, you one case, you describe about Argentum nitricum, na, that uh, yeah. impulsiveness and that hurriedness, anticipatory anxiety. Cholo, 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 jaldi karo, jaldi karo. You know that that is very important in Argentum nitricum. So, hey, Dr. Pranav, Pranav, hmm. Dr. Pranav, is there a question there? Uh, are we having qu question answer round, Satish? Yeah, no, yeah, this yeah. is the two things which this is just a case it. which you are sharing, yeah. right? So yeah. I would invite you to share such cases in our Telegram group. Uh, if there is a question, uh, please write it in the chat box. Uh, we are not opening the mic uh, tonight, at least. Right, uh, Dr. Adil, you must be tired after speaking. Like, in, you know, it was a marathon session for one and a half hour. Really fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. There are I didn't mention there are children. Few what questions. we should observe. Dr. Adil, there are a few questions. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, one Dr. Devanshi asking. Uh, is the, uh, what are the limitation of heart disease in homeopathy? Homeopathy in heart disease. Yeah. <laughs> why are you not asking? Uh, why are you not asking the direct question? Limitations of the homeopath himself. Homeopathy, homeopathy has got unlimited area of activity. It totally depends because we have not been able to explore our own scopes till date, mind you. There's a lot of things have to be done, and. Now there are let, lot many things which are still unfold has to be unfolded. We have only taken up one small step, I should say, and I'm sure it will take a decade for us to establish ourselves as homeopathy and cardiology. So for my answer will be that there are no limitations. Every homeopath must try to go within its own self and explore as much as possible. Now uh, a little bit technical now. Limitations wise, we can like if people come with us, doctor, we PhD, PhD close karna hai. Uske liye dawa hai PDA band karna hai, PDA no, obviously not. But we can still manage them for a long time without surgery and change the change. Second is primary pulmonary hypertension. Only drug in the entire allopathy has been Viagra. Viagra was actually meant for primary pulmonary hypertension. Till today, 2021, 1994, when Pfizer was given, it was also the same drug. It has got a lot of drugs, but still it's a very big limitation because this uh, uh, disease kills patients very fast. So, uh, I mean, yes, we have got successes also, but limitations, this, if you call me, tell me heart disease limitations, I would, congestive cardiac, not congestive cardiac, sorry, this, uh, uh, congenital heart disease, Ventricular arrhythmias and where you need a shock. That is a limitation of homeopathy. Of course, allopathy may be a limitation. Because you shock is a shock. 
ventricular tachycardias and bradycardias uh, and second is uh, the congenital, uh, congenital heart disease and pulmonary hypertension primary pulmonary hypertension these are diseases which are more difficult than routine so one more question how to study materia medica for particular system like cbs or git or any other system studying is very easy you take a book for example when i started to coming from allopathy i read book in hms so allopathy mein kya mere ko badi badi kitabe padhne ki aadat thi and the first drug first book mein ko mili was uh, allen's key notes and mere ko bachka nahi lagta the isse homeopathy banta hai itni choti si book mein a second i used to love boric because boric ke andar bada systematic kiya hai pehle head mind ye wo pura to hamare allopathy se bada milta tha whereas allen's key notes was kabhi suddenly mind and kabhi skin aa jata tha to are erratic so i used to ask him i i will study boric ड्रग्स and there are now so many other authors then different so system wise also remains same matra medica whether system or uh, approach always is holistic otherwise we big approach there is no homeopathy there. in first case why naxomica was not indicated naxomica was indicated but uh, 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 gelzimim wala case gelzimim okay. or uh, argentum medicum Argent, argentum टेलीफोन का मैं कहा से भी कुछ भी बताओ पेशा मेरा हसबेंड एडमिट है ये सिम्टम्स है लकीली होम्योपैथ है तो जरा कुछ देख के बताओ भाई ये ऐसा है कैसा है so that was luckily so jelsi mein argentinatic my brother and sisters ab after the patient has actually come to me so this was so jelsi was what actually had given on those symptoms any other drugs could have been indicated but jelsi did its job so it was correct in cardiac patient in children Meaning, what factor should be observed what symptoms so there are two things uh, ah, uh if you have got like we have got two crises crises barabar hai वन टू थ्री तो अगर सिंगल क्रीज है हंड्रेड परसेंट उसको हार्ट डिजीज होगी होगी उसको सीमियन क्रीज बोलते हैं डाउन सिंड्रोम के अंदर रहती है तो उसका इको खराई लेना चाहिए एक जो सीएम निकलेगा हाइपरट्रॉपिक ऑब्सेक्टिव कार्डोमोपैथी या वीएसजी निकल सकता है सेकंड लो सेट इयर्स नॉर्मली इफ यू सी इफ यू इफ यू ड्रॉ एन इमेजिन लाइन इंडेक्स रीड्स लाइन अगर वन फोर शुड बी अपर कान इज डाउन एन इट इज एन इंडिकेशन ऑफ हार्ट डिजीज Immediately see it. Heart disease is going to happen. Third is polydactyly. If it has five fingers instead of six, and both of them have been affected, then it's a heart disease. It's a kidney disease. And last is gynecomastia in young children. These are peripheral connotations. Why it happens, we don't know. My husband can explain it to you, but that's a different thing. Now we'll not go that. But these are few pointers that this child is going to have a heart disease or it has a heart disease, so, congenital heart disease. Has to be investigated. Okay, In a baby, small baby, the baby sucks milk and keeps on losing it and takes deep breath. Four months to take a tapere, warm up, pata hai, dakar khila na pata hai. Thode thode der mein, it is a sign that baby could be having a heart disease. Uh, I mean, infant and toddlers. So these are few uh, pointers to pick up heart disease in children. Hello, Ajay. Hello. Yeah. Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Dairi Shankar. Sir, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, to diagnose hypertension, we will measure the BP and we will say 120 by 80 is normal. And uh, if he, uh, if the readings increase, we will uh, diagnose the hypertension. That's uh, okay. But once it is diagnosed hypertension, and if the patient is under allopathic treatment or anti-hypertensives, mm, to see that the reading is low or normal. but few people will get the complications of hypertension few people will not get the complication of hypertension 
why these people though under the medication they go into uh, complications of hypertension why not the other people a very good question it is going to take me another 4 hours to explain how a homeopathy is hypertension see, see a hypertensive state the reading the 120 by 80 in a normal indian adult it is a range of uh, 110 to 140 systolic and 80 to 90 mm of mercury diastolic in uh, adult indian men the normal range now a homeopath sees hypertension in a very different light we see that for example my bp may be 130 by 90 and uh, uh, someone else's bp may be 110 by say 70 Now you are not going to diagnose one ten by seventy. Are you going to diagnose hypertension? One thirty by ninety. Chalo, thoda sab kar bilay. So normally, when the first patient comes to patient comes to you, you have got symptoms, and every time the BP is coming normal. What you do is you measure both the arms, and if there is a difference between ten, so if the BP is one thirty by ninety here and there is one twenty by eighty here, there is a difference between ten. This man or woman has got hypertension. A second, sometimes some people need a high hyper. They are always in the hypertensive state. if you lower the bp purposely by by drugs they will start showing symptoms so a constitution is adapted for certain level of tension which is very unique to the constitution it's only the fluctuation and only so early morning mein mera bp bahut badh jata hai mujhe itna chakkar aata hai neend khul jati hai if i'm having symptoms only then the value of 130 by 90 or 140 by 80 or 140 by 90 is important or 110 by 70 is important even uh, people having a uh, bp of 90 by 60 90 systolic by 60 mere ko hypotension hai hypotension nahi agar unko weakness aa raha hai to hypotension hai agar they are comfortable to bp hamesha par 90 by 60 90 to 60 ya 56 bhi ho but koi takleef kuch nahi aisa aap bol rahe hai isliye hai to uska value nahi hai now second question is why certain people go in for complications are the don because of lot of factors and that is they don't control ha it's a myasmatic evolution and myasmatic evolution हमारे प्रमोटिंग फैक्टर्स एंड एक्साइटिंग फैक्टर्स पे डिपेंड करते हैं सब लोग एक ही सिचुएशन में एक ही टाइम पे नहीं रहते इसीलिए कुछ लोगों की दवा बंद हो सकती है कुछ लोगों की दवा नहीं बंद हो सकती है और कुछ लोग कॉम्प्लिकेशन जा सकते हैं और कुछ लोग नहीं जा सकते तो देयर इज सिचुएशनल थिंग एवोल्यूशन ऑफ मायसम इन सम पीपल बहुत ज्यादा है किसी में नहीं है तो तो देखकर कॉम्प्लिकेशन में नहीं जाएंगे thank you doctor thank, thank you thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much sir i would sir i'll request kasim sir to do the concluding session please sir thank you so much now for me to conclude this very uh, i should say a very uh, unique session because homeopathy and cardiology where i have been asked to come and because dr adil is here um, i will only say one thing that let us see homeopathy as in a holistic manner do not restrict it only for one single system as a whole of course the days have come of specialization no doubt about it and we at shahad hospital where we are working we have separate departments no doubt about them but my sincere request to each and everybody who is doing homeopathy i should say who may practice homeo animanian method of working i uh, should see the every patient of cardiology as a per patient in a holistic manner keeping in mind that homeopathy has got lot to offer for managing cardiac cases and as far as my experience along with dr adesh i can assure uh, whosoever is listening to me that please take us a daring step in managing as cases of hypertension and what we diagnose as hypertensive state of disposition manifesting different forms i thank all those who have participated who have joined uh, this particular webinar on behalf of the national academy as uh, this national journal of homeopathy and also national academy of homeopathy and hope we will be able to continue for the same thank you very much one more thing is an appeal to all those who are new to engage national journal of homeopathy so there's several journals Come in, coming and going out in the market day by day in the homeopathic market. But certain journals have set up a milestone, a standard. Twenty nine years, I believe. So, Doctor Sadish, am I right? Twenty nine years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. NGH first began here. Yes. And our hospital, nineteen ninety two. Nineteen ninety 
who was the year when I had arranged a uh, All India seminar. That Vishpala had come over here and practically called, I should say, the um, stalwarts of homeopathy of India. They were here at Shah Hospital, and from here uh, the um, Vishpala shifted from Indian homeopathic journal, which she was editing to National Journal of Homeopathy. So at least uh, Shah Hospital has got the credit, or rather National Academy has got the credit that we could shift over Vishpala from the Indian journal to National Journal. And so that is what is small historical information which I like. Until now, it has not lost its standard, rather the standard is evolving, evolving day by day. Even in 2020, when everything else was shut, the seminars were not shut. Small, steady, continuous, small growth. So people who want to, if you, and every doctor needs a discussion platform. Why not join NGH, both online and offline, and propagate it? Not because I'm a member of NGH, but because I have gained from NGH a lot more. People never knew the small, Nakhu is a very small place. NJ, no, no one knew Adil Chimdanawala. But yes, participating in NGH discussions and for articles, of course, now I, I uh, myself write very little articles because of a lot of time. But then over all these years, it has become an absolutely amazing journey and still continues and continue. And uh, sir is, uh, has been the advisor since 92 is inception till now. Meeting for question and answer solutions for the past so many years. Please convey my uh, best wishes to Vishpala. Although she sure, is not sir. over here, I, sure. I, I give her the entire credit of continuing and keeping this very journal viable, lively, and very, very, very useful to the upcoming students. Thank convey you. my regards, convey my remembrances to her. Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, team. Thank you very much, doctors, for participating. Thank you. Thank you so much, all of you.